Hello everyone, welcome back to a computer video. Now, if you know my history of my YouTube videos, you might know that I've been a, uh, a very long time computer enthusiast. You guys wanted to see the return of computer videos. Oh my god, I forgot to remove this fucking thing off the... That was for my tripod. Here for you today, I have a HP server. And not just some ordinary HP server from like Gen 6, Gen 7 or higher. Like, no, not yet. But for today, I have one of the first HP servers to have its internet management console this being one of the first models to have that built in which is also called ILO is built into the motherboard which we'll be taking a look at which is the reason why I have this case uh, already sent me off because maybe due to shipping uh, when it's all the way closed I have to like pry it out with a screwdriver so um the internals I guess. Oh wait, before we do that, I didn't even show you guys what model this is. So it's right here. This is the ProLiant DL360. I don't know why my camera is it focusing. It's f***ing stupid. And this is the Gen 3, as told by the very early looking HP logo, and this Intel Xenon sticker on the top. And I actually have another machine that has the exact same sticker. And that being this thing down here. So you can see here we have our two Pentium 4 Xenon processors. I don't exactly remember the exact speeds or specifications or what the model of Xenons those actually are. But I know I can tell you that this thing has four gigabytes DDR ECC RAM. I don't know what exact DDR. It's probably SDDR or aka like DDR1. There's two of these that are Memex, which is which one being this. And then the two other one gigabyte sticks are Hynix, I think. Yeah, they're Hynix sticks. And they all have this HP sticker here. Oh, and also I didn't even get to mention the two hard drives that we down that we have down here. These are Ultra 3 SCSI hard drives, and I'm pretty sure that all of these are 36 gigabytes, like the label on the front says. So as you can see here, 36 gigs. It's right there at the bottom of the HP icon. It says 32. 0.4 gigabytes and this is the ultra 3 SCSI interface which is the same one on the HP workstation that I showed a little bit ago this server is basically <laughs> the same thing as the workstation that I have down there that one too has two xenon Pentium 4 processors and two of these probably exact same hard drives exact same interface the the workstation only has a gig this one has four. I might want to find some more RAM for the workstation at some point. There's another one of these drives in the second slot here, and they're both configured to be a RAID 0. I already have Windows 2000 database server installed on this, and it took forever to find the SCSI drivers. Oh my god. Anyways, let's push this back in here. What the fuck? Why is it not going in all the way? There we go. There we go. All right, awesome. This here is a fiber cable, or cable, what the f This here is a fiber card. There's a fiber port on the back. But enough talk about this stupid fucking server. Let's go ahead and plop the top case back, uh, top shielding on. It's kind of floating right now. Might also be, ah, oh, because I didn't have the thing up. Duh. You have to, there we go. Now it's in there. Since we're really going down the HP route, or the ProLiant route, I guess I should say, might as well pull out this keyboard. It's a compact keyboard that I've had for a while. The compact had the uh, ProLiant brand before they got bought out by HP, so might as well just throw this on here and connect the, 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 the PlayStation 2 port. Plug in the power. Can you guys hear that? You guys should be able to hear that. That is, that is just the power supply sound. We're gonna turn on the system. 
in three, two, one. Hey, there we go. We are here. Keyboard error. Oh yeah, that, that error message did appear the last time. Yeah, that's right. Wait, what? Oh, system will boot in three seconds. Let's actually go to uh, system management. So you can see here, this, this is the DL360 Gen 3. Here is our actual Intel CPUs. Let's say, oh, I thought it said 80 gigahertz. I didn't count the two point after. <laughs> I'm so stupid. These are both Intel Pentium 4 Xenons clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. And the time and date is obviously incorrect. I'd say 2005, I thought, or maybe that was when the BIOS, yeah, BIOS date. Custom post message? What? Yeah, that's kind of funny. Oh, oh, that's what the thing at the start, of, at when the server was starting up was talking about. It has a backup ROM, that's kind of cool. Maybe it's a change. <laughs> it shows up right there underneath the processors. That's so cool. I didn't even get a chance to fucking what is going on here, bro? Ah, okay. I wasn't able to go into the Isla. What the hell? Uh, I don't exactly remember the password. Oh, okay. So it was just my password. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Oh wait, no, this is the fucking smart array. God damn it. Okay, so I finally got into the BIOS for the ILO controller. I think the BIOS for this machine itself is a little bit fuckety right now because the last two times I had to quote unquote hard reboot the, the server, it got stuck on like multiple stages of the, the BIOS. It's so weird. Right here we have our TCP IP stuff. And we're at, wait a minute, <laughs> we're at assigned IP 69. So I just figured out how to change the uh, static IP. So you go into here, you go into DNS, DHCP, and you turn this option off. You don't need to go into the advanced option here and change anything, no. You just need to go in here and disable this. Then you save with F10, of course, then you go back to the network tab you go into T TCP IP, and then in here, you can actually go down and change the IP address, finally. So we're gonna change it from 69, even though it's funny, to something more reasonable. Boom, there we go. Now we got 111112. Oh, users, administrator. Oh, I could add my own user, hold on and then save. Okay, cool. So now we just need to reboot or uh, shut down the server. Let me just exit here. Isla will be reset. Utility will now exit. Okay, that seems good. Day two. It is day two of recording the same server. The last little bit of footage that was going to originally be with this video, I have totally scrapped because it was literally just me doing basically nothing. So what we're now going to be doing with the server is a very simple idea, and we're actually going to be doing it remotely uh, from my HP workstation here. And um, well, we're gonna be making a Quake 3 server. I have an actual copy of Quake 3 Gold here, and there is a way to host a game server from the official installation like one of these. And apparently, this thing was originally bought off of fucking Canada uh, because it says EB Games on there. Okay, there we go. Now, obviously, the server is on. Is the battery actually tied to the ILO? No way. Okay, so I do have to get that CMOS battery replaced, okay. Interesting, did it save my login info though? The fuck? I think the admin password is on the front here. Okay, 
Interesting. And where is my account? It deleted my user account. I set my own account here. It was named Kyle and it's gone. Oh, it's in virtual devices. Okay, Jesus. All right, monetary press. Here we go. Virtual power. Are you sure you want to press virtual power on this, the virtual power button on this device? Yes, we do. In three, two, one. So the server is now running up, of course. It's probably going to have to go through uh, post again because, of course, I unplugged the power to it and the CMOS is dead. And now says the server is currently on with a little green button here. All right, so computer, I'll do this. The com this computer cannot connect to the remote computer. Try connecting again. Is it on? Okay, the server is up. I don't think I set up remote desktop connection to it. Okay. Well, uh, we can uh, set that up right now, I guess. Here we are at the login screen of the server once again. I will log in. There we go. Okay. So basically to solve the remote connection issue was to enable the terminal services feature in Windows 2000. I already had remote access enabled, but I totally forgot about the terminal services feature having to be enabled for remote access to fully function. So, uh, dummy me. All right, so I am back and I have burned a service pack four version of Windows 2000 server. I think I'm down to like one third of my CDRs. So, I mean, more things I have to fucking write on CDs, huh? Talk about ass. Click finish and of course we got to restart so let's do that okay it works okay i just had to do it a second time we are now connected to the hp server via my hp workstation of similar specs let's log into the server and here we are okay so this looks very familiar of course and now let's get our copy of quake 3 into the cd drive and where did I put my box copy of Quake 3? Oh, it's right here. All right, so I'm going to insert the, the CD. I can't show you the front because the fucking product key is on the front. So this is what happens when I try to fucking open it. Clicks like four times. It's really stupid. And there's Quake 3. So we're, of course, we're going to install Quake 3 uh, because we need the game files and all to run the game as a server. CD key you entered appears to be invalid. What? Wait, did it say invalid? Oh, C appears to be valid. I, I wrote that as, I saw that as invalid. What am I, I'm so stupid. Uh, let's just try minimum first. Let's see where that gets us. And then if we need to, we'll, reinstall the game with the maximum uh, option here. So we're going to C, and there's our Quake 3, and we have our Quake 3. Okay, so we have a shortcut here. We're gonna copy this shortcut, and we're gonna name this to Quake 3 Arena Server. And we're gonna change every, we're gonna change all of the arguments here. Oh, the, I didn't even realize the page that I'm looking at, this is off of a GameSpy page. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize. And now let's run the shortcut that has the custom arguments. Can't load default.config. Let's try to reinstall the game again with the uh, max settings. All right, so we're reinstalling Quake 3 again with the full install size. We will be right back as soon as this is done. So after the Quake 3 installation was a success, I tried to boot up the server shortcut that I made for Quake 3, and that did work, although my workstation could not talk with the Quake 3 server for some random reason. And I couldn't figure this out for like an hour, uh, like 
10 minutes on camera and then like a couple more moments off camera. But I wasn't able to find a solution as to why the Quake server and the Quake client weren't talking together. Of course, they saw each other on LAN, they were able to communicate, and obviously, I've been remote connected to the server, which is how I've been managing it. So it's definitely not a connection issue. It's most definitely something, an issue with either me configuring the Quake server or something with Quake in general. One thing that I did notice and I was just reminded about while editing this video was when making that shortcut, I did not add one argument that was put in to the GameSpy article that I was reading on how to start up a Quake 3 server. And in the command lines that they have for the Quake 3 server, there is a exec command that runs the ffa.config file when the Quake 3 server starts up. Now, if you remember when I was originally loading the Quake 3 server with the minimal game files, it was trying to look for default.config and I didn't change this argument at all. So for what I think could possibly be the issue is most likely I forgot to put in that launch option when installing the max game files for Quake 3. And unfortunately, I wasn't really able to catch this when I was recording. And so I kind of just gave up. Well, as you can see in here, everything has been turned off. And also my wireless microphones died, so I'm using my the, the built-in camera, camera, built-in camera into my camera. I'm using my built-in microphone in my camera. I wasn't able to get the Quake server from the HP machine talk with the HP workstation. I have no idea what I'm missing. Someone will probably tell me in the comments that, hey, you're a dumbass, you should have done this. So yeah, I, I basically don't know what is going on with me trying to set up a dumb little Quake 3 server? But hey, at least we got somewhat somewhere. But that's basically going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you all enjoyed, please slap that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next hour. You're wrong!